We got this story from the Daily Mail. Republicans tear into Biden's ATF pick for bungling definition of assault rifles, dodging questions about Hunter Biden lying on his background check and comparing gun owners to Tiger King in car crash Senate appearance. Oh, yeah. David Chipman was confronted by Republican senators during his confirmation hearing. They excoriated the nominee on his definition of assault weapons, refusing to commit to investigating Hunter Biden and comparing gun owners to Tiger King. Chipman deflected before saying an assault weapon is, quote, any semi-automatic rifle capable of accepting a detachable magazine above the caliber of 22. That is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. This would include a 223, which is, you know, largely the AR-15 round. I would say 556, but, you know, Senator Lee brought up Chipman's April 2020 comments mocking first time gun owners in the midst of a panic at the onset of the coronavirus pandemic, said at the time, quote, they might think that they're diehard ready to go. But unfortunately, they're more like Tiger King putting their family in danger. This is what I imagine like Darth Vader would sound like, you know, the Empire in Star Wars. Give up your weapons, you morons. And then, you know, just taking them all away so that people can't defend themselves. I think that they're going to do everything that they can to get every kind of weapon that they can. That's why the guy's not using any definitions. He wants to leave the door wide open as possible. But at the same time, what happened in Texas recently? Constitutional carry. Constitutional yes. carry. Did I read it with state number 21 or 22 or something like yep. that? I mean, that is growing. Did That's you, a trend I can get behind. Did you know in the 80s we had less gun rights? Did we really? Yeah, that's crazy. I was, I was, uh, I was researching the uh, constitutional carry. It used to be in, in the 80s, most states were May issue for concealed carry. That means they could deny you. Then sta- many states, most states are shall issue, meaning they can make it difficult, but they have to give you the right to keep and bear arms. There's a lot of Supreme Court rulings on this. There's a few jurisdictions, but I think Maryland is the only uh, uh, May issue state right now. My favorite thing about it, though, is they have this map of the country. And it says, there's a color quote. It's like, green means constitutional carry, and there's tons of states. It means you can walk into West Virginia, just have a gun, just walk around. You can't brandish it at people, obviously, but you can like walk around with big guns and do whatever you want. Well, do whatever you want figuratively. I don't mean literally do whatever you want. I mean, you can like walk around and do things like go to the store and unless someone you know complains. Then you got the blue states. This, the color code says blue shall issue. Then you have the yellow may issue and then the red, red. So, so I think uh, Hawaii and New Jersey are red and it says may issue parentheses in practice won't issue. Wow. So places like New Jersey, I remember because we, we were there, we were in the Philly suburbs. You try to apply for a gun and they'll say, what do you need a gun for? Isn't that what Heller in D.C. was all about? Because that used to be the application in D.C. used to be explain your reasons for needing a concealed carry. Now it's like if you want to tell us, you can tell us. But they, they can't use it as a condition anymore. I thought that was a Supreme Court decision. Shouldn't it have struck down those ones in New Jersey and Hawaii in that case? I don't know. They, they, they act like they're May issue, but they're no issue. Yeah. So, so I went to maybe that's it. Maybe like, oh, OK, we're May issue. We're not we're going to we're going to issue. But they don't. Mm-hmm. Right, so right. I was told by everybody, you know, in Maryland and New Jersey, you basically will say, here's my reason for needing it. Oh, I deal with large transactions. I run a business. I'm high profile. Maryland apparently will say, OK. New Jersey apparently will be like, nah, can't do it. You can't even pump your own gas in New Jersey. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got you, you, you pull up and they do it for you. So if you were like, I want to defend myself against potentially tyrannical government, they'll they won't give you a gun. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty not. sure that probably not. You, you, <laughs> if you if you say like exercising my Second Amendment rights, they tell you goodbye. What later. the heck? Yeah, dude. But this is this is the crazy thing. Uh, uh, this ATF guy. It's, it's interesting. We see these stories. The stupidity of this man. And the, the, the sheer, like, what's the right word? Villainous? I mean, mm-hmm. the guy looks evil. He looks like, a, a, if, if, I was, if I was casting a Star Wars movie, I'd be like, that's the Emperor guy. Like, that's going to be working for the Empire. The way he looks, the way he talks, the he duplicitousness. The, the, per, the permanent frown it's on the sides of his mouth or, like, downward, like Mitch McConnell. Some people yeah. have that, and it's He needs a mustache, though, so he can misery. twirl it while he's doing these things. Well, I'll take all their guns. <laughs> I definitely, uh, as I encounter more and more people and have greater life experience, I come to understand that IQ and intelligence is definitely on a curve. There's a distribution of all these things. There's plenty of stupid people out there. I'm afraid to continue to apply stupidity to what is actually malice. Right. That guy knows what he thinks an assault rifle is. Yeah, but he won't say it. Right. Like Be- you said. Right. He's not being stupid. He's is- actually being very calculating and smart about it. There was, a, there was one point, I think like two years ago, where they said an assault weapon was any weapon that, that was semi-auto and took a detachable magazine. <laughs> so look what he's saying, yeah. right? 
Did he say he said he said rifle in this instance? So he's yeah. not talking about handguns. But they actually included in one of their one of the Democrats included in one of their bills that handguns would be an assault weapon, like a Glock 17. I remember I went down to the, the March for Our Lives and I asked people. They were like ban assault weapons, and I said, "Do you know the definition of an assault weapon?" Like honest question. I'm just doing interviews, and they were like, "Yeah, you know, like the, like the AR-15, these rifles." And I said, "Are you aware that current legislation proposed by Democrats would ban a Glock 17?" And they'd say, "Oh, what is is that? That's the handgun." I'm like, "That's what police use. I, I believe police use a Glock 17. It's, it's a very common handgun." And they were like, "No, no, that's 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 not right." And I'm like, "Well, that's what you're advocating for right now." I saw one lady only a sign that said "ban assault rifles." And I was like, what do you mean by a ban assault rifles? And she's like, I don't think assault rifles should be, you know, people should be able to go and just like buy them. And I was like, but they can't. It's like they're, NF, they're, they're heavily restricted NFA items. It's already, you know, possible to get. They don't, they don't really make them anymore. She didn't know anything about it. So she just like folded up her. She's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize, you know. She, you disrupted the protest? By your like journalism, actual just regular questions. It's yeah, Socratic of method. I mean, look. Obviously, when you go to these protests for gun stuff, I think most people are are, are they know these people have no idea what they're talking about, and so you can approach these people like, "Hey, you're really dumb. Tell me why you're so dumb and and look stupid for the camera." But I didn't. I'm not going to do that. I was just like, I noticed you wanted to ban assault rifles. Well, uh, I, I'm curious. The, the National Firearms Act basically banned all assault rifles as defined, you know, by, by the ATF select fire rifles, however you want to describe it. So these are basically heavily restricted and you typically don't find them in gun shops at all anymore. So I'm not sure, like, do you, did you want to get rid of the, the, the uh, grandfathered in NFA items? And they're just like, they have no idea. They they have no totally idea. Well, most people don't know anything. Most people are ignorant. There was a rationality to being ignorant in the sense that you could have no impact on these outcomes. And then the impact on you is usually going to be very small. Unfortunately, the government reach and their the creep into every aspect of our life and everything has gotten so great that that ir that rationally ignorant balance I feel like is getting out of whack. You need to know no more. It will affect your life in a way that it didn't affect you, and you need to be able to take action. What's interesting? Increasing constitutional carry states. It the, the choices are very clear now. Like I'm going to Miami next week. I can't wait. The free state of Florida. Yeah. Are they constitutional carry? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't, but I don't they know. They passed that social media thing. They passed the social media thing. It's totally wide open. It's going to be a great time. I'm I'm so excited about going and getting out of DC. But my point is, is that like people are moving. I know a lot of people that have moved. People that are migrating. People that are literally taking their lives and putting them into place where they're going to have representation that meets with their desires and their expectations. And John Robb, a great military strategist and analyst, uh, uh, he's talking very regularly. And Mike Anton as well from Claremont uh, and Hinsdale, Hillsdale talking very clearly right now about like maybe we should be resorting the states. Maybe we should be moving counties from one state to another. Maybe yeah. we should be going Eastern Oregon, joining greater Idaho, maybe Southwestern and Western Virginia joining West Virginia. I'm sure there's but, a number of but options this is like hyper, that. This is hyper, hyper polarization. So, yeah, people are moving, and, and we, we see in northern Colorado, in northern California, in eastern Oregon, they want to move their Je counties to other Jefferson states. Jefferson State, I think. The state of Jefferson the is one proposal, or greater, greater Idaho is, yeah. would, would incorporate that as well. Then you have the one county in northern Colorado that wants to join, I think, what is it, Wyoming? Yeah. Because of, like, cattle ranching and stuff. That just, that's just hyperpolarization. You but know, there's precedent, though. This has happened before. Massachusetts used to be all of New England, practically, and how many states are up there now? The uh, the there was one other instance on um, West Virginia and Virginia, for example, now the Civil War it was pre right, right, right. Well, no, 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 it was the Civil War. So as the Civil War was kicking off, West Virginia, Western Virginia was like, nah, we ain't we don't want to be a part of that. So West Virginia was north and Virginia was south. Split the split the state in half. Rearranging rearranging counties among states don't I don't think would take constitutional uh, amendment or, or I don't, even federal approval based on the article that I read from Michael Anton and uh, just the other day. I don't think that matters. Why not? I think if a county says we hereby decide that oh. we the people choose different governance, the United States should uh, oblige. They should they should oblige, but there are rules to joining the union, and I think one of them is that you can't just make whole you know states out of nothing. So no, this, no, no, no. Right, right. So this, joining is just, Idaho. this is just specifically about rearranging counties into existing states. I encourage that. Why not? It's happened before. Yeah. Representation of the people that you want. There's no reconciling these issues that we have. These are fundamentally opposed, diametrically opposed, irreconcilable philosophies and ideologies. And that, that will precipitate full-on hot civil war or or 
union collapse. So right now, Oregon, the eastern Eastern Oregon is not being represented by Portland and Eugene, right? right. And, and I guess Eugene. is Vancouver part of uh, uh, Oregon? It's like north of Portland. No, that, that's north of Seattle. Vancouver's in Washington. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a Vancouver in... Uh, Washington and in Canada. Oh, it's Washington. I'm thinking of mm. Seattle. Yeah. It's oh, just okay. north of Seattle. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. I oh. believe... I don't know. We're only live on the air with hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first cop it's chopper. Just spitball. <laughs> <laughs> this is... I feel the same way about Jersey is that like all this Jersey legislation is basically Newark and like Jersey city there. It's representing uh-huh. New York, the New York suburb. Oh, and oh, oh, all the rest of New Jersey is getting hit with this ridiculous legislation. It, it is Washington, but it's just North of Portland. So we were both right. Oh yeah. Vancouver, Washington is just North ah. of Portland. So, <laughs> but funny. anyway, how often does that these are, these, it's, it's, it's very similar. It's basically the same Metro. So, but, but it's not Oregon. So these Eastern counties are not being represented. So they say, we want to join Idaho where we will be. Well, at the very least, there's some political pressure, right? Very little, but some. So the, the politicians that come out of, you know, eastern Oregon still are like, well, we can't do absolutely anything we want because we have some pushback from eastern Oregon. But for the most part, they're powerless to stop us. You get rid of them and they're going to say, now we're completely unrestrained and have no reason to do any compromise at all, period, for any reason. It's possible. They'd also have less electoral power. Mm. They, why would they have less electoral power? Well, if we're, we're not talking about oh, blue right, right, right. counties adding themselves to blue states, we're talking about red counties. Democrats would never win again. Democrats or we're talking about red counties subtracting themselves from blue states and adding them to red states, which would increase the electoral power of the red state, decrease yep. the electoral power of the blue state, which means they'll never let it happen. If the Democrats have any power about it, they'll never let it happen. Although. All of a sudden, I've been struck by some great compromise that's going to involve greater Idaho, Jefferson State, uh, a greater West Virginia, a District of Columbia state, Puerto Rico is a state. This is the way that politics gets done. Negotiation, compromise. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe that maybe that maybe that comes down the road. But that would be uh, an artifact of a functioning why, why, republic with negotiations why and would, compromise. <laughs> why would the, the wealthy elites in Oregon give up their serfs? Well, right. No, it would have to. It's not. It's <laughs> they won't. Happen. This is going to be the issue, right? Yeah, it's yeah. normally a ground up movement. So perhaps the reason you get uh, the Democrat establishment and look very much so many of the neocons who want guns banned. Oh, but, you know, I'm a conservative, but reasonable gun control. I'm a hunter. I don't think we should have AR-15s That's when I served in the Marines. You know, that one guy, that Marine guy on on, on uh, uh Twitter, who was like an HR administrator, and then says, this is the weapon issued to me, a weapon of war. And it's like, bro, bro, calm down. Like you, you did HR. Okay. I, I respect it, you know, because we, you know, serving is serving, but you need humans. M16s, not AR-15s. You need to calm down. And so, but you know, they, they very much want to take weapons away because then it's a steamroll. Yeah. Then it's a steamroll. So this is interesting. Uh, there was a meme posted where somebody, you know, some lefty, some Democrat was like, nobody's coming to take your guns, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, they already did. What are you talking about? Literally already did. So I, 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 so when you live on the border of when, when you're between three states, Virginia, West Virginia and Maryland, you know all about how they've taken your guns away. Because I, I, go, to, I go to the gun shop. Crowder, uh, for instance, sends me the SIG M400. You can't bring it to Maryland. It's not legal. So if you live in Maryland, you literally cannot buy a bunch of regular guns, not even crazy guns. There's just random things that are banned. And you're like, I don't know why, but they've banned them already. Now, what they're not doing is taking them from you. The problem is what they do is they'll they'll ban it and then say, if you've owned it before this date, you're good. You know, the problem with that is sheriff deputy shows up to your house. Uh, the, uh, you got an M1A. Well, I've owned it for I don't know. It's illegal, man. Yes, but the law says I don't care, man. You're under arrest. Give me your weapon. You think these guys know anything about what that means, what the law is? No, it's an affirmative defense, meaning after they take your weapon and charge you with a felony for having an assault weapon, you can then go to court and make your and plead to the judge, please. I, I had it before 2013. Do you have a receipt? It's, it's, been, almost, it's been eight years. I don't, I don't have a receipt for this. Lock them up. So keep your receipts and then go to the gun store and get copies of your receipts if this you don't is, have it anymore. But, but think about the game they're playing. Oh, it's, it's meant to obstruct as much as possible. So now, you know what this dude said, this ATF guy? He was like, I, 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 he mentioned to uh, Marsha, uh, I think it was Marsha Blackburn, that we should make all, all rifles NFA items. Like, there you go. That solves the problem. The same guy said that? Yeah. This so, is the so, problem with ignorance, man. No, it's not ignorance. No, it's no, malevolence. The people that are ignorant in the United States that are witnessing this are not, they don't realize how dangerous and idiotic this guy sounds and seems to be acting. You mean evil? Yeah. If he's, mm-hmm. he's feigning ignorance, that's evil. 
But if he's, to an, if to he's an, actually ex- ignorant, it's just dangerous idiocy. To an, to an extent, uh, for, uh, but, but let me clarify too, for those that don't understand the National Firearms Act, basically they, 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 continue, they regularly put items on this list. It takes you like nine months on average, depending on who you ask, to say six, to, six months to a year to be able to buy one. Hmm. Suppressors, for instance, these are NFA items. You want to get one? Takes a really long time. So I'm, I'm in, the pro- in the process of buying some and it's been, I think, like three weeks and so now I've got to wait for like an ATF transfer from FFL to FFL. Then I've got to get the paperwork and to start the process. So this is an extended process because of shipping, which will take just over a year to get. And what people need to understand, first, silencers are not real. Like there's nothing you put on a gun that goes pew, pew, pew. Mm-hmm. Suppressors drop the, the sound s- s- enough to where if you're outside, you, you'd probably be okay without wearing ear protection, but you still want to wear ear protection. It just reduces recoil. It makes it safer. You know, you, I, I talk to a bunch of instructors and, the, and, and a lot of uh, uh, experts and competitive shooters, and they're like, it definitely makes it safer. It makes it, the, the recoil is better. And for you in your home, wanting to defend your home, people, people need to realize this. You're sitting inside, you're, you're, you're sleeping in your bed. You hear glass shatter in your house. So you grab, you know, your handgun or whatever. You fire that in your house without ear protection. What are you going to do? You wake up in the middle of the night, someone breaks in your house, you grab your shotgun, and then you grab your ear pro and your eye pro, and then you're like, good to go. No, you're going to grab it and be like, boom, and everyone's ears are going to go, ah. You get suppressors and it makes it better, better. Well, these are these are NFA items. Why? Because people are dumb because they see movies where the guy goes pew, 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 and then everyone's like, I didn't hear a thing. And then people believe movies. Tools of assassination. They, they believe movies. They Like, man, you don't want to be in a room where, like it's, when a gun goes off. Your, your ears are going to be ringing. You're going to be like, ah, I can't hear anymore. But people watch movies and they, they and they, they pass laws based on movies. And I think that's a really good uh, description of Democrats. We were talking with, uh, <laughs> we were talking with, you know, we had Scott Horton on the show the other day. And after the show, you know, we're hanging out. We had a mini ramp session. It was pretty sick. I did a kickflip pivot. It was awesome. Uh, we were talking about the policies of the Democratic establishment. And I think Andreas was saying, like, they're centrists. Or he mentioned that. And I was like, dude, they're not centrists. And he was sa- Scott was saying, I think they are. They're like corporatists. And I'm like, dude, Hillary Clinton, no politics. She says things that she thinks will get her elected whatever she has to say. There's no ideology in there. Now there's leftists who are like, we must have this and we must have the, you know, universal health care and, and, and cooperative economics. Then you have the right wing where they're like, you know, free market is better and individual responsibility. These are people who believe in things, left or right, economically, traditional versus progressive. Then you have the establishment Democrats who are like, what do I have to say to attract the largest group of people to vote for me? I'll say that. Okay. There's no, there's no ideology there. There's no, that's not centrist. Simply being like, I'll say whatever I have to say is not centrism. A centrist is someone who's like, conservatives got a good point about, you know, individualism. But I do think the left makes a good point that we can't have people just dying in the street. Like, how do we how do we solve for that? Centrists are just like, you know, kind of saying, like, let's got some good ideas. Right. I've got some good ideas. There were centrists. There were. And our political differences were about policy because both the Democrats and the Republicans came with an appreciation of the Constitution, I thought. Maybe my history is a little shaky. You probably look into it and it probably wasn't as rosy as you might expect. But it seems to me now, though, that, like I said earlier, irreconcilable first principles of these ideologies now that make a center impossible. What is it? Is it the war? Is it like some people are okay with, with conquest and some people aren't? Uh, there, there's like, it, it's not a left or right. There's another. There's a, so this is, this is what I'm thinking. It's, a, it's not left and right anymore. I know the political compass is authoritarian, libertarian, economic left, economic right. But the, Demo- the, the, the neolibs and the neocons are not left or right. They're not. No, they're the corporate uniparty. And they don't, have, they, they don't care for, for uh, uh, any kind of ideological agenda. They don't care about a free market. They'll support the free market insofar as it gives them power. They don't care about regulation. They'll support regulation insofar as it gives them power. They want to blow up people. They want to blow up kids. Why? Because they can sell weapons to the highest bidder. They can build oil pipelines. They can dominate different regions and get more power. They're like fascists, you know, to varying degrees. But it, it, it's, it's not, not even necessarily fascism because there's no underlying ideology other than give me more. I want. So yeah. you've got leftists who I disagree with, but at least they believe things wrong things, things you can actually point to. The establishment doesn't care. They'll say whatever they have to say. I think that somebody might argue that greed is in itself an artifact of free market capitalism, right? Like there's varying levels of greed. 
greed or desire or want to acquire resources. Uh, we want to acquire resources to sustain our families and have some luxury time and take vacations and retire early and enjoy our lives. Hopefully a little bit more than that. It's, it's just, I think, the same scale to think from that. I want to be able to do whatever I, I can do. And then, you know, more power, more money, more power, more money. I was just studying the, the Celts. So, oh. I'm sorry. Just self-centered greed in and of itself is, isn't it Adam Smith saying this is the, the key to everything that we've got going on in a liberal open economic system. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, Go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.